Hey, it's Aton. Welcome back to my channel. And I have seen people making Wagyu burgers all over the internet. And I keep asking myself, are they delicious? Is it worth the hype? And does it even work from a functional perspective? Because Wagyu has so much fat in it. Do you even have the right fat to meat ratio? Today I'm testing it out. So I shipped in some American Wagyu and this Wagyu is less fatty than traditional A5 Japanese Wagyu that you're probably used to seeing on the internet, which is what I see most people making their burgers out of. I don't get it because typically, you know, for a burger, you want like a 70% meat to 30% fat. Some people kind of shift it like that, uh, but that's usually the right amounts that you want. And with like A5 Wagyu, you're, you're talking like almost 50-50, if not even more fat. To start this off, I'm not going to go ahead and First up, I'm gonna cut the meat and then it is grind time. Some would say rise and meat grinds. Who says it? No one, okay. Before we put this through the meat grinder, it is very important that we get the meat nice and cold. If you meat grind it right now, it'll just be way too not, way too hot, it's not hot. It'll be not cold enough. And then what will happen is it'll kind of just like pulverize it and like, you know, blend it. And we really just want it to grind it. So I'm cutting it into one inch cubes. We're gonna pop that into the freezer and that freezer is gonna get it nice and firmed up and into the freezer. Now you may notice I already have some other stuff frozen here. These are the meat grinder attachments. It is very important that you freeze them while you're doing all these things because they need to be ice cold. This just contributes to the perfect homemade ground beef. Pickled onions are a beloved restaurant, a little accoutrement, but that are super easy to make at home. So I'm just gonna grab myself some spices from the amazing spice wall. Into the pan, you want about half a teaspoon, three fourths a teaspoon into each of them. So we have our coriander, a little black peppercorns, a little bit of our mustard seeds on a kind of medium high flame and just toast those spices. That'll really bring out those oils, really just bloom those flavors, make it unleash its inner deliciousness. Then a little white vinegar right over here. And I need to grab myself some sugar. Should I have done it this way? No. Did I do it? Yes. These look nicely toasted. Now I'm just gonna grab a little bit of vinegar, which can I just say looks suspiciously like water, which has always scared me. Like what, imagine a prank of if someone put vinegar in your water cup. Oh my God. About half a cup to a cup of that into there. Then now I'm gonna add in my hand sugar. While that is going, I'm just gonna quickly crush my garlic. Good opportunity to get any built up aggression you may have inside of you. What am I angry about? Rain. All right, our sugar is nicely dissolved. Now I'm gonna take the garlic, just kind of, you know, keep mashing it with the hands, right, like that. Flame goes off and you're basically just gonna steep some garlic tea and grab yourself some ice. And you can use sugar, a lot of people use sugar, but a little trick Rachel taught me on my team is that if you add in- You're saying use sugar, use water? I meant ice. A lot of people add in water, but I think an easy way to get it to cool down even quicker is by just using your ice. Grab yourself a onion. So just cut that in half into the jar. Pickling liquid, might be some ice cubes, but they'll melt and okay. Also very important, about a teaspoon or so of salt into there and just give that a little stir up, cover and while we make the rest of the burger, this will do its pickling, it's quick, hence the name. Over here I have my stand mixer, I have a cool attachment for grinding the meat. So let's go back into the freezer. Take that out, pop that right in there. Look at that, there's, you can see there's ice on the outside. That is how cold it is. First up, grab the auger and, oh my God, it's cold. It is so cold. Just get that right in there. Then you need to grab the blade very, very carefully. So blade goes in there. Next up, I'm gonna take my larger die. The small one we're gonna use a little bit later. Place that right in here for our first round of grinding. Then, this is so cold, oh my God, wow. Then just screw on the top and there you go. To make sure this is nice and tidy, gonna grab some ice. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you are, might I recommend pre-ordering my debut cookbook, Aton Eats the World, available everywhere books are sold. Where do you buy books? You can buy it there and on AtonEatsTheWorld.com. All right, back to burgers. Just loading up the meat and just start on a kind of medium speed. 
There we go. And then just very gently press it down. You don't want to mash it. So just kind of you let, let gravity do the work to just help slowly. Oh, oh, the, the meat grinder is giving birth. The meat is coming out. Oh my, look at that beautiful freshly ground meat. I mean, can we just take a second? Look at the meat. Super easy, just take that off of there. You can use your knife to gently grab the other die, which I popped in the freezer. I'm acting very gentle with this. You don't wanna mash it, you don't wanna do anything of the sort. We wanna keep this meat in its best qualities. And just use the little pusher to just very gently push that meat down. And as you can see, it's now gonna come out and this is when it's gonna to start to look like the ground beef you're used to seeing. I grabbed a scale and a little bowl and I'm gonna basically just make two half pounders. Now, it's very important that you don't compact this too much. That is really the key to a delicious homemade burger. So I'm actually gonna kind of use the shape of the bowl to help me start making the shape. Then slide it out. As you can see, it's now already kind of mushed together a little bit and basically just use your hands to gently form it into the shape of the burger. And there you go, you have a homemade burger. I mean, look at that, it almost looks like a brain. Burger sauce time. I'm gonna get a little hot sauce. I'm feeling some Cholula. Mayonnaise Dukes, shout out to the Southerns. A little bit of Worcestershire mustard. Um, ketchup, 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 ketchup. You throw it. Ketchup. Pickles are important. Mayonnaise, ketchup, mustard, Worcestershire, little Cholula for some heat, little splash of apple cider vinegar for some acidity. <laughs> Chopped pickles. Grab a whisk and whisk that up. Everything is ready. I'm just going to grab my pans. I'm looking for a nice, shallow, coated, non coated. Get that on a nice, medium, high flame. All right, get that on a low flame. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. The, wag the Wagyu burger already has so much fat in it. So what I'm thinking is I'm going to literally just add like a kiss of oil into the pan, like almost just a touch a tuck, just to make sure that nothing sticks. Now let's talk about seasoning. Seasoning burgers should be the same way you season a steak. That is absolutely key to making delicious burgers and the pepper goes right at the end uh, because you don't want to burn the pepper. And just season the outside with salt on one side and season the other side. Into the pan. Ooh, you can already hear that sizzle. And cook for about four to five minutes per side. I like my burger medium, but you can cook it however you'd like. Just don't cook it well done. Don't cook it well done. And just some more salt on this side. While that cooks, I have a beautiful heirloom tomato. And just, ooh. Look at that. Look at that beautiful slice. Sesame potato buns is where the bun game is at. <laughs> so I'm heating up my other pan. I'm just gonna go in with a little bit of oil into the pan. And I think it's very important that you toast it. That will help build some heft to be able to stand up to the juiciness of the burger. The time has come. You'll know it's ready when you can easily take it off and flip. Ooh, look at that beautiful crust we got on there now. I'm immediately gonna place a slice of my plant-based cheddar over there. I'm going to add a little bit of water just to the edge to help us create some steam. Voila! And our burger is ready. I'm just going to temp it. You know, if you're doing a Wagyu burger, I mean, this is like a $50 to $100 burger, so we're not, we're not playing around. Great, right around 145, that is what we want. Bun should be ready, nicely toasted. So I'm just gonna come on over here. Sauce on the bottom bun. I'm using some beautiful lettuce right over here. Burger a nice slice of our heirloom tomato. Grab some of the pickled onions. That's gonna add that nice extra zing and acidity. Sauce right on there. 
there we go. That is my Wagyu burger. Oh my God. Wow. And look at this, we have a pool. You can go swimming in the amount of fat dripping off this Wagyu burger. That is an intensely delicious burger. As you can see, it is literally dripping with fat. It is just insanely delicious. You have that delicious flavor, all that fat. At the end of the day, fat is flavor. Then that fat is perfectly cut with the acidity in the sauce from the apple cider vinegar and from those pickled onions that give you that perfect just balance of acidity versus fat that really rounds out this dish and makes it not too heavy. Thank you so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed this. It was so much fun. Comment below, are there any other food myths or things you've seen on the internet? You're like, Eitan, is this real? Should I extra this at home? Now you know the Wagyu burger. If you need me, I'm gonna go eat this burger and then I'm gonna go swim laps in the meat juice. Mm.